to the Mad Trio podcast. This week we have the California pariah Jonathan Charney, James, the fat man Hello. Stevens, and the man who always won a job driving a creepy van and picking people up in, Ryan Preston. With free candy. Entirely accurate. <laughs> See? <laughs> I, so... Specifically, I wanted the job driving. I didn't necessarily care what the fuck I drove. I just like driving. I actually partially, I partially blame fucking James for that one. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun driving, right? There's, there's a lot well, of things. You know what? You were, you were one of the few, the few people I knew that actually took fucking driving an automobile seriously, and you know, we we had the the recreational time of just talking shit about every other driver on the road. Yeah, which is why I profile these days. <laughs> <laughs> it you might can... not be politically correct, but it but it fucking works at least when it comes to driving. You're a like, let me tell you the things that I avoid automatically. Okay, as a, as a driver, and I'm talking, I I drive, I have driven more than most fucking people that are 50 years old. Okay, I, I put fucking a million miles on a single vehicle once. Uh, well, I was responsible for about 600 thousand miles on that particular vehicle. But beside the point, at the moment, he's what I avoid. That old guy from Family Guy. Huh. That's actually his. Which uh, uh, the 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 the, the neighbor yeah. is always uh yeah likes Chris. Yep. Yeah. Hey Chris, you're looking mighty fine this evening. Anyway, right. uh, I told you drivers you there's avoid. There's a few things that I uh, that I that I avoid like the plague. Um, partially because they're they're true, partially because I'm an asshole. Um, one, the ever present handicap placard in the window, yep. not the one on the license plate. I'll, I'll give benefit of the doubt to the license plate. Well, I'm talking the one on the window, uh, in like like hanging from the thing. That is a re- fucking parking placard. The rear okay, view. Okay, there's well, specifically just... while while driving. Like if I see him in a parking lot, I don't I don't like key their car or anything. I'm just saying, you know, if I pull up behind him and they got the fucking handicap placard hanging from the fucking rear view mirror, I'm gonna get around you and move away from you. Yeah. To me, you're you're indicating to me that you're not only uh, uh, need to get out a little bit closer to the establishment you're frequenting, but you're a handicapped driver. Like, so, oh, you, yep. you you don't know how to handle this particular vehicle, so See, I'll I've, just get out of your way. I found it twi- uh, two different ways with a, the handicap placard and license plate. They either drive slower, in their five to fifteen miles an hour slower than the speed limit, or they're going like thirty five over the speed limit, and you're kind of wondering, am I going to have to? you know, rescue them at some here's point. What it, here's what it really boils down to is you're too stupid to know it's a fucking parking placard and it has nothing to do with you driving. Yep. Okay. So the, the people that have it on the actual license plate, you're a handicapped everything because you're 92 years old. Basically. You, you know, so very, very I, I'll look, I'll give those cats the benefit of the doubt. You get those little old lady from Pasadena, you know, who just book it down the road and that's fine. Yeah. Um, the other ones is the, uh, the little aftermarket, um. Uh, Spoiler. Little bubble mirrors. Oh, that, yeah. that stick on the inside of your side view mirror because you're too much of a fucking idiot to be able to kind of turn your head and look out the side of your eye for your blind spot. Eh, now, I've... obviously, I'm not talking about the people who have the one already attached for like a big ass dually. You know what I mean? That's that's another thing. I had a truck once that, um, because the way it was designed, I actually had to have that little bubble mirror because otherwise, I couldn't see shit out of like. You know, no, I, right like I, I mentioned specifically aftermarket. I'm talking yeah. people who had this shit on like a Honda Accord. No, I actually had to like, you know, it was aftermarket. Yeah, but you had a big truck. You didn't have a little tiny piece of shit car. This is true. I didn't have a lowered Honda Civic. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And with a little bubble thing, like really. And then also the same thing with the rear view mirror. If you can't use a factory rear, rear view mirror and you have to get the big extended one, I'm just, I'm just not assuming that you see everything. <laughs> I, I, I have to do say though, as a parent, those mirrors are awesome because it, it kind of allows you to reach behind and smack, you know, go, hey, what are you doing? Whack! Without really. <laughs> so, Brian, I got a question for you. Have you watched the show Canada's Worst Drivers? <sighs> no, but I am obsessed. With <laughs> I'm obsessed with YouTube compilation videos of <laughs> of, of car crashes. Not. You know, awful, terrible ones where you know nine people die or anything like that. But just that was a cool one, like stupid ass mistakes. Now, most of them primarily come out of Russia because apparently there's so much uh, uh, insurance fraud that everyone has dash cams. Yeah, that uh, one is pretty bad. You, the Russians, the ones. Oh that- man, and I thought I was assuming for a while that like oh Russians are just awful, awful drivers. But 
I realize that the amount of cameras per capita is so much different that they're going to catch even the, the rarest of accidents, you yeah. know? The, the ones that I always enjoy is, you know, that there's something happens, the both drivers get out, and then, you know, you have this one buff dude that's like, I'm going to kick your ass. And there's a lot well, of those the type video of drivers. Insurance, the type of insurance fraud that happens in Russia uh, is the kind of shit that, like, like, you stop your car because somebody stepped out in front of you. And yeah. you stop short about two feet, and the person just flops like a soccer game onto your hood. So he does a flat back bump like you're doing a WWE wrestling. So John, yeah, oh yeah, me. no, he elbow drops your hood and then falls onto the ground, screaming that you broke his leg. Just run over. So him. I remember one day I was driving down uh, ten, ten down in Southern California, and I see uh, this James. We call it the ten, bro. Uh, what it did say after the second time if you paid attention brah. <laughs> yeah anyways so i see this guy get out of his vehicle holding a tire iron but he was like stomping towards that vehicle in front of him i'm like dude that guy is gonna jack some shit up he's not going to change their tire <laughs> <laughs> just the attitude that guy had just walk with that tire iron up to there i'm like mm, i think i'm not gonna like stop something tells me this guy is not a good samaritan yeah so my 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 favorite Excuse me. My favorite video of the last year is you had this guy on a motorcycle. He had the, the camera on his helmet. You had this, it looked like a little commuter car, like a Toyota Echo or something like that. And it was a red car, and this person had, uh, I think it was a student driver, drove past uh, the stop part on the intersection, right in the middle of the intersection, reversed, and reversed enough that completely ran over the bike. The guy jumped off the bike, watched the lady completely go over it. He's like, what the hell? Good thing you got away from the bike. And it was that that's yeah. my that's my favorite one because it's like it's not hard to reverse. My last no. car like went up to 25 miles an hour in reverse. Yeah. Used to freak he out enjoyed passengers. That a lot. Yeah. A lot. A lot. Um in sad news, if anybody's a big fan of Motown, the Queen of Soul died today. Aretha Franklin had died. Yeah, that apparently. fucking that kind of bummed me out. Yeah, it, the, the coolest thing, if, if anything cool about death, is a lot of the radio stations were playing her old music. None of the stuff from like the 80s and 90s. Like some of the songs I've never heard. Um, which is like, if you're going to celebrate somebody, you know, play some of the music that really made her famous. And she died uh, of pancreatic cancer in Detroit, which, you know, shout out the fact she stayed there. I think that's pretty badass. That is, yeah. Um, I don't know, I just kind of, that sucked. I mean, I always... I'm not a big Motown fan, but I always loved her. Yeah, you know what I see? Here's the thing is, I am a big fucking Motown <sighs> fan, man. Like, like I really, really dig Motown. And, I mean, matter of fact, I, I became a fan of her after I saw the Blues Brothers movie when I was probably like 11 <clears throat> or something like that. Um, way too young to understand why that movie's so amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean really 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 amazing pipes for one you know and and just a, a style of music that had the most soul you know i mean obviously you know eventually they, they called it soul and r&b and i mean those kinds of things but the kind of passion you got from motown was was uh fucking amazing you know what i mean it, it, it's rare you find that shit even today i would say like it's a really bad comparison but i mean it's similar to uh, a, a way in passion, the way she sung. Like if you listen to the Beach Boys, there's there's there was passion in that music. You could tell by the way it was arranged, by the way it sung. It was sung. If you listen to Aretha Franklin's early stuff, I mean, there's a, sorry the bad pun. There's a lot of soul in that. Like just the way she sung it. I mean, I love. It's one of the reasons I love her is because of that. It's the same reason I love jazz. Because you can hear a recording of jazz and like, oh, that dude had a really crappy day that day. Because it comes through the music. Yeah. On, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. On uh, on, the on instrumentals. That, yeah. You know what I mean? Just some guy <clears throat> playing the trumpet. You're just like, damn. Okay, I got you. <laughs> and I, she had an amazing way of uh, expressing emotion through uh, through songs, like really good singers do. Like when if it was yeah, an upbeat think, song, you could really tell that that she was just you know in that moment. I she think was she really she it. started, if I'm not mistaken, singing in the church choir, right? Yeah. That's what I so, I mean, today. that's that's how a lot of folks back in the day got it. I mean, well, Ray Charles, I mean, almost invented the style of music where you where you sort of borrow the, the gospel tunes, you know, those really powerful gospel tunes, you know, from from the black churches uh, uh, back in the day. 
and sort of co-opted it for pop music. Well, wasn't you know? it the and, style of singing? Not necessarily the, the, the tunes, but the, the way it was done. Well, the style of singing and that yeah. kind of passion typically kind of came, you know, really heavily out of, or at least a lot of, because it was because it was all over, I mean, the South, I mean, everybody went to church, yeah. you know, so any good singers that were around in any of those towns were probably in the choir. Oh, oh definitely. You know, and, uh, but yeah, those, those, those sorts of soulful renditions of those things, you know, got bred out of the Baptist church, you know, type of music, you know, in the, in, in, in Motown or in the South and yeah, I mean, some of the fucking best music ever. I, I was, I was really bummed. It was. I honestly kind of feel the same way when Michael Jackson died because I was a big fan of his early stuff and the stuff in the eighties. Um, just because the dude had major pipes. ABC. I felt the same way about Freddie uh, when I heard Freddie Mercury died back in the day. It's just like, like you, you lose these guys or these gals that just have insane talent that are just like once in a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Freddie Mercury is just one of the best singers of all time. I'm I'm yeah. semi looking forward to. I can't think there's a biopic coming out about him. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah, you know who's playing him is uh, Randy Malik, the 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 guy that was in um, uh, uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, oh. oh, he's he's oh, been right. in a couple other things. It was but, supposed yeah, to be. It was supposed I made to... you guys watch Mr. Robot. Huh. Yeah, it was supposed to be the guy who uh, who played Borat, but I guess he either quit or got fired. Yeah, it was going to be yeah Sasha Baron. Yeah. Oh, and, and I was excited. I thought he would have done a great job. By the fucking way, have you guys watched his Showtime series? Nah, I don't like that. You're, you're asking the wrong guy. I don't like comedy stuff, especially his. Oh. Oh, no. James, you, have you seen, you seen anything about this? No. Remember my, okay, my so th- there's only that. been four episodes. And and I've I've been kind of like like I dug some Ali G back in the day, right? Um, I liked Borat. Borat was fucking hilarious. It was it was pretty cringy, you know what I mean? And I have a real problem with cringy comedy. Like I can't even fucking watch Meet the Fuckers or Meet the Parents rather. Uh, it's the cringiest dumb shit movie ever. But uh, this show, man. So I, I come across this this ad on YouTube one day, and it just said, you know, what if Sasha Baron Cohen? And I'm like, all right, I'm listening that had been secretly filming a show for the last year. I was like, oh, what if what if he'd been secretly filming a show for the last year, right? And then the episode comes out and it just said, who is America? I'm like, what the fuck is this? I Apparently just... what this dude has been doing has been trolling the entire country, basically, is the best way I can put it. He's He's created like four different characters that are the most legit characters he's ever done. I heard like he got... these... I heard he got chased out of a gun store. Like he tried to buy a gun illegally, and the gun guy, the the gun store owner, said, "Hey, you're the Borat guy." And he apparently he turned yeah, to some guy recognized him. I just don't like that style of comedy. I'm not a big fan of comedy that makes people look like fools, even if they they, they say people think they deserve it. I I don't know. I just don't like that. I don't. Well, no okay. So I'll ex- I'll explain uh, one of the uh, one of the segments there that he did. He he uh, made himself a. Um, an ex-Israeli Mossad agent. Oh, this guy. And I don't know if you've seen clips of this on YouTube. It is uh, completely insane. Okay, so you can definitely tell he's sort of pushing a uh, 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 not-so-friendly gun uh, 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 agenda with the show, or point of view, rather. Not really an agenda, I would say. I just say point of view, honestly. But... Um, Aside from that, the shit that he is, is is sort of detailing is a bit beyond the pale for anybody that I think I know. Um, so he gets this, uh, I can't remember if he was a senator or, an, or maybe an ex-congressman who still sort of sort of lobbies on behalf of the NRA or something he, like if, that. If um, I remember correctly, he, uh, he, was still a, he was still a congressman, I think a federal or state congressman, but he lost the race. So he was finishing out his term, I thought. Oh no! This was a this was a separate one. That, oh, that guy right there, yeah, had basically yelled the N word a whole bunch of times um, uh, in, in reference to trying to stop terrorists. You see, and he was like, "Fuck that! I was duped. Nobody told me what this was for. I didn't understand." So and everyone's I, like, "Yeah, dude, we don't give a fuck. You should still leave." You <laughs> see, I just don't. None of this seems funny to me. As a matter of fact, I, I I kind of I would never watch this. I just. Well, this is this is my this was going to be my ultimate point. Is I don't think it was funny either. It was it was more 
more insane than anything. Like, they got this dude to endorse, not that guy, a different guy. Um, they got him to endorse a puppy gun. Okay? A fucking Walter PPK with a, with a stuffed puppy on top of it that's marketed towards four-year-olds. That sounds awesome. Yeah. But I'm a gun guy, so <laughs> you're asking I'd the wrong it. person. Why not? I would, it wouldn't, I'd buy it for me. I mean, come on, who wants? Well, okay, but that's my Let's point. Is, 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 he was Rit! trying to get him to... <laughs> he was trying to uh, to get him to um, endorse a bill to train uh, what he called kinder guardians from 12 years old to four years old is how he put it. All right, I'm done. Um, to uh, to carry guns in schools to stop potential uh, uh, terrorist threats. I'm down. Depends. I'm on sure the bullying will stop too. <laughs> it's like air marshals and airplanes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just. I mean. I, I would be kind of down for like a like a ten year old air marshal, some kid just kind of like playing cop and give him a real gun. You mean like Macaulay Culkin and Good Son? Exactly. That went well. You would him. not fuck around with Macaulay Culkin as your air marshal. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I just that depends on if you look like the crackhead at that moment. I, you know, I don't know. I just I, I I just don't find stuff like that funny. Like I said, he's definitely not going after somebody like me. I don't think I don't think you were supposed to find it funny. Eh, I just You're I don't supposed know. to find it satirical. <laughs> no, I think they actually got this guy to whether or not he fucking whether he knew what it was going to be used for or how public it was going to be shown. The fact that this guy could literally say the words that he said on that screen in any context <laughs> is fucking baffling to me. Look, I'm a fucking pretty staunch gun nut too. You know what I mean? And and. We've definitely had these conversations before. Obviously, I wouldn't fucking arm a four-year-old. I would. Here's your Daisy. Here's your it de- it depends on Davy what... Crockett <clears throat> nuclear rifle. So to to <laughs> to quote to, to to quote Bill Clinton, it depends on what the definition of is is. Um, what do you mean arming? Is the question? Are you talking like a, a, a BB gun? Are you talking about like a, a, a Nerf gun? It really depends on um, the, the definition we're, we're like, talking about. Okay, arming with a deadly weapon. So, we just had this conversation. So you don't give him anything. A deadly weapon. So you keep everything out of his hands. Do you think a four-year-old with a stapler is going to kill you? It could happen. How much of a, how much of a force multiplier do you think a fucking stapler is to a four-year-old? Depends on the four year old. Didn't you see that buff kid a long time ago? <laughs> I mean, but yeah, as far even, as I'm okay, concerned, even that even that kid is not going to beat you to death with a stapler. Are you sure? I mean, I could uh, be yeah. unconscious. I'm pretty I mean, I could be. Sure, in, I could beat know, the like shit out of that fucking Afro- five year old kid shot. that's all jacked. <laughs> and I could be laying on the floor like twitching, and he just comes up and starts beating me with the stapler for a couple hours. I mean, my skull could crack. That's no, look, I'm. Lip. I'm I'm all about, you know, fair use of tools, you know what I mean, and things like that. Like, hey, listen, you know, like we should probably sooner rather than later teach him the, the, the ins and outs of, of a knife and I how it can be dangerous. He wanted one of those lead way to dildos. Wait, wait, wait a second. Are you mean like you're giving him stabbing practice? Like it goes in, the knife goes no, in, No, 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 but I'm just out. saying like, hey, you know, I mean, this is that is... what you mean in and out of a knife? I mean, it's not hard. Well, here's the blade. Here's the backside. You cut people with the pointy part. You so that's them. that's why he really liked clockwork. That's, well, that's my point, though. You know, though, you know what I mean? Out. But at the same time, <laughs> even at the dinner table, I'm probably not giving my four-year-old a steak. John said? Yes. No, go ahead. No, it just... You know. he, he brought up a clockwork orange for a moment there. I finally had a, a, a he had an in and out quote. joke. I did. <laughs> Give him the old in and out. Oh, <laughs> so oh, you got a <laughs> a little bit of the ultra violence. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. actually, one of the, the cool things, if you can say cool about a uh, heat wave, <clears throat> it's been really hot around apparently the UK. It's actually revealed a lot of uh, lost arca arca. Yeah. Archaeological sites. Thank you. I can't speak today. Neither can I. I can barely say. Um, it's actually so- shock. Uh, it was pretty cool. It's talked about some of these are from. It said like some of these are anywhere between five thousand. Uh, is it five thousand years or older? Basically, it's like dark rings in the sand where the dirt's been disturbed. So they're actually flying over fields and finding outlines of homes that used to be there. Well, technically everything's owned by the crown. So I mean, right. they can just. 
you know, take it back. Hey. So I, I know I thought what this was really neat. Where was this again? This is in England, UK. the UK. So they're they're flying over. Well, that narrowed it down. Well, I mean, it's on the, the Isle, the British Isle. It said so. I the mean, article it's says in there, but I mean, it's not just Irish and you know. So this is this British, is from the gar- this is from it's the UK. Guardian dot com. Ancient, ancient farm Fake news. Ancient farm burial mounds and Neolithic monuments among fascinating finds in Britain and Ireland. So it's across the entirety of it. Um, the scorching week of summer of 2018 left crops shriveled and gardens scorched. It has revealed lions of scores said. of archaeological sites across the UK landscape, tracing millennia <laughs> of human activity from Neolithic, Neolithic curses monuments laid out more than 5,000 years ago to the outline of long-lost, uh, long-demolished demo- Tudor halls and in the intended to replacement as replacements. So I, this is cool. It allows them to actually trace buildings and stuff that weren't there because of the way the, the, the earth was interrupted. Wow. That's crazy. And uh, that's somewhere, cool. somewhere along the article, it said it's the, f- uh, it's the best summer for that. I think like 20 years, not for their food supply, but uh, sure. I read somewhere that this, they, they've seen some similar stuff like that before, but it's the first time that it's ever been so Prime? present. Okay. Yeah. Uh, See, so there's one that talks about one believed to be a Roman farm uh, with uh, see with fields and paddocks has shown up in uh, Bicton and Devon, and it's I, I'm really bad at pronouncing some of these names, but it's really neat. So I've been reading a couple of I've read a couple of uh, articles about it and how they're this is allowing them to trace it, you know, like take pictures of it aerially um, using a plane. Then I'm assuming it later they're going to come back in places that are more have you know more uh, outlines. Hmm. Like on the Guardian.com article, there's a field they're showing that has a bunch of circles in it. So I'm assuming at some point in time they'd come back in some of the sites and dig them up if they had permission. Nah, those, those are UFO landing sites. <laughs> I mean, it, it, well, I mean, I can only imagine that uh, the the you know archaeology isn't exactly a uh, you know burgeoning industry. You know what I mean? Like it's probably hard to get get people you know, actually interested in, in, in doing the field work necessary for, for, sure. for archaeology and, you know, for, for one reason or like another. That, because, I mean, you really have to dig down carefully and keep going, and it's a very I, tedious task. I think it depends so, uh, on... I mean, I'll bet you it just takes some years and years just to get enough people to these sites, because, I mean, it takes so long to, to excavate, you know, those kinds of things, and, and I imagine the funding's got to be a bit of a bitch, uh... It probably run into a lot of roadblocks, which is why you know they probably take a lot of pictures and make some maps and come back later on. And I think the the other the other part of it is just getting people interested in history, which seems to be an issue, yeah. at least of lately from what I've been watching. Because um, there, there there's a, a BBC News uh, article, I think it's a, a video or article, uh, talks about their uncover dig to uncover Mary Queen of Scots Castle. I mean. That's the coolest thing about England and Europe is there's so much history that, given the right conditions, like a heat wave, allows you to see where, hey, uh, if you're by Hayden's Wall, hey, there used to be a house at this part right by it. I mean, I just think that's amazing because you can't really say that in America. Not really. Not 5,000 Well, you, you can, but you here's the thing is you you know there's a lot to be discovered in this land. I mean, you know, the, the Siberian, uh, uh, not the Siberian, the, uh, the, the land bridge that used to connect a lot of stuff. You know, you can go back you know, the millions of years that you need to and discover old animals, the, the, the flat-nosed bear that used to walk around America. But I'm really, I'm um, really talking about, like... Used to bump into a lot of you know, we're, No, we're, I know what you people. mean, but, but there's... Here's a, like, with the people here in America, we pretty much, going back three, four hundred years, we kind of know it was the same from three, four hundred years ago to probably about five thousand years ago, so we're finding a lot of the same stuff. Well, there's there's, but there's in records. there, that's the birth of, of, of like the most crazy civilizations ever, the rise and fall of empires happened over there. Well, yeah, I mean, there's 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 pretty much almost a written record, minus when they say it was Eric the Red or somebody came over and allegedly discovered the the North American continent first. But, you know, we, we know the there's, Mormons. there's so much written record of the United, of, you know, of the United States and before that of North America that there's really not much we don't know, really, besides maybe daily life. I mean, if you talk about England... Like, nobody knows a whole lot about, you know, like, who built the, God, what is it, Stonehenge. There's so much missing right. information because those people are, are lost and their oral history is lost. 
So that's one of the reasons I think being yeah. an archeolo- uh, archaeologist there would be amazing. I knew a girl who, uh, I think for a summer or a semester, went over to Israel and was digging up stuff uh, as an archaeologist there. I mean, it just would be amazing to touch something like, hey, this is, you know, like Jesus could have touched that. Or I, I just think it's amazing just to have some sort of common thing that you can physically pick up and feel that, that somebody held at one point. I think it's amazing. Yeah, well- down here, they're, they're I was trying to go this weekend, but my folks are in town, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it, but it's the last week they're having a, a Genghis Khan exhibit uh, nice. at the Ronald Reagan uh, Presidential Library uh, down here in L.A., and um, or Simi Valley, but besides the point. Uh, but yeah, man, fuck, I've been wanting to go to this thing for like the last three or four weeks. Um, cause, so it's the John Wayne exhibit? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Please tell me they got his costume from that fucking movie. I, I and and dad. there's even samplings of the sand from New Mexico. If you really want them. See, I think that's the one cool thing about living near there's Los New Angeles is the museums. Um, what did they do? Well, this one's actually the the, the, the presidential Nevada. library. See, that's um, I think. Well, that's badass though. I mean, because up here there's so Ronald stuff. Reagan just happened to be from around here. Yeah. I still think it's pretty badass though. I mean, oh they yeah! Have, oh they fuck have yeah! Some... I got the Natural History Museum, uh, the Simon J. Weisenthal Museum, the Science Center, uh, both in Orange County and uh, Santa Monica. Oh, there's a ton of shit around here. The uh, the, the MoMA, uh, modern art and contemporary art. It's ridiculous. Actually, the, the only thing there's a car museum. There's two things I want to see. I want to see Jay Leno's car collection, and there's a car. I can never remember the name. There's a car museum somewhere in Los Angeles. That's supposed to be amazing. Yeah, the, uh, oh, shit, I'll think of the name of it in a minute, I'm but sure. I, I could never remember. So I uh, I found this. It's actually right where, uh, it's right where Biggie was killed. Where who? Biggie? Fun fact. You're, you're breaking up for some reason, so what did you say? Notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls. Okay, that's what I thought you said. So do you, uh, do you know what Tinder is, Ryan? I'm, uh, uh, uh. Tassily aware, yeah. So Tinder apparently is like a dating app. Or so wait, a- you have the app? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Not that he's the last yeah. we'll see. Okay. So, uh, so Tinder's a dating... Have you met Amber? Uh, maybe. Right. She was looking Does for... Does your a- mom know about it? Uh, uh yeah. Mm-hmm. He was looking for... And your dad? How far are we going to take this joke? <laughs> I'm just sitting here just interrupting John at this point. Oh. Yeah, that's what you said. Jackass. <laughs> I was going to say she was looking for a fun time, but ended up with Ryan. So there's, you know, remember Lydia from Skyrim? I remember Lydia from Skyrim. Was that the vampire? No, that no. was the chick from what? Uh, uh, White White Run. Yeah, she was the first person you got that followed you around. Yeah. The house call. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So God, I'm somebody, such a fucking nerd. Somebody made a Tinder. Uh, uh, a, a Tinder thing profile. for her, a profile for her, and this is this nice. is because this is hilarious. My hobbies include standing in doorways, complaining about doing my job, and dying in the most inconvenient places. <laughs> and not to mention giving away your position constantly, all the time, all the time. Boy, so, I hate followers. Fuck. But you know, would if you double equipped the fireball staffs on her, she did a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, and managed to piss off uh, my. Uh, what was the horse? Shadow Mare. She pissed off Shadow Mare, ended up killing him. It's like, you bastard. And in that game, Shadow Mare doesn't the... come back. Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started on that. I mean, that's as almost as worthwhile as horse armor. By the um, way, that was the most hilarious e- uh, text message I've ever gotten. <laughs> James had just gotten Shadow Mare, and I just got this as a message. Fuck me. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Yep. Shadow Mare dies. Yeah. What? <laughs> It was like the most disappointing thing in that entire game. You're saying an I mean, undead evil horse died. That, that somehow dies. <laughs> the fuck? Anyway, so, I, you know, one of my friends showed me uh, an x-ray of somebody. And I know John has seen the x-rays of my spine. Ryan, do you remember the x-rays of my spine? Did fuck yeah. Me? So, my friend showed me this x-ray of somebody's spine... That literally went from the base of the skull down to their low back looking exactly like mine. Whoa. Maybe four vertebrae in between that did not have titanium bolts in it. Wow. And they even went 
from the back of the of the neck. They also had another section that went in the front of the neck. God damn. Now, my initial comment on that was, did, did this guy get crushed by a plane? <laughs> now, <laughs> the interesting thing is, this person is standing and walking still. Damn. That's crazy sauce. Now, I had a few questions that would come up, and you guys probably couldn't follow this, but you know, I was like, is this scoliosis treatment? Did the guy actually have broken vertebrae that they replaced? Um, obviously, it didn't touch any of the spinal cord, because, I mean, the guy's not right. walking, but this guy has to have no range of motion. He can't turn his neck. He can't bend over. He can't, you know, he can't bend down and pick anything up. He can't, I guarantee he has to, the like, guy can't. like, turn his whole body to look shit. at you like that Sasquatch like, video. He basically yeah. walks like Christian Bale in the first Batman movie. Yeah, I mean, just totally stiff. But this also came up in the middle of the conversation, is you guys, uh, are you guys... And do you follow any of the medical treatments that have come up in the past, I'd say, 20 years? Depends on what. Well, I'm thinking, like, when I initially broke my spine, this is back in 1998, and that's why I'm saying 20 years, you know, uh, they came up with an injection that they can give people of um, not really... It's more stem cells they can inject, not from, like, fetuses or umbilical cords or anything like that, but they were doing stem cell injections that, within the first two years of a car accident, can um, can help rejuvenate the spine. This came out two years after my car accident, so I was shit out of luck. I think it was, like, two and a half years, almost three years. Damn. Um, and But one of the interesting things that they did at that time is I had opened uh, the surgical incision on my back there it was open for about six months and what they would do is they would pack it with algae and then they would also pack it with a st sterilized linen strips and the algae would dissolve as the wound healed so you hmm. never had to remove that um they are still doing a lot of medical stuff with algae i don't know if you guys have heard of the fish scales that they do to help rejuvenate skin that has been lost you know what the most amazing thing about this, but that you're saying, is I bet they used to do that back in the day when they really didn't have a lot of cures. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this is just old techniques that just well, I mean, they're learning. One of the things that came to mind was, uh, you know, it's been a, a major breakthrough since the old bloodletting days, you know, where you, they drain the, bla the bad blood out of you. <laughs> I mean, that's an interesting concept. Luckily, there's been a, a lot of uh, breakthroughs since then. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I was looking up a couple of the current ones that have come out within the past couple of years, just so I can bring them up in our conversation. But um, one of the ones that came out uh, three, or sorry, uh, yeah, three years ago is a 17-year-old invented an ingenious way to instantly stop bleeding, and within um, let me double check uh, how long it says. It's only like oh, there it is. Um, so this compound that he came up with will form a clot within 12 seconds damn and heal the wound within wow. minutes because as i said before let me pull it up um it's the same concept that they were doing to me back in 1998 this is actually from the the website each batch of gel begins as algae which you know is made up of different polymers and things like that and it just builds and helps your body to put it together to heal the wound hmm. so it just basically comes a base that your skin that your body produces cells along with it and builds it back up weird but it's amazing um this kid was 17 years old and from what they said is he did this in his grandfather's lab so obviously his grandfather is some type of scientist or something like that but he created this in his grandfather's lab not at some <clears throat> big you know medical john hopkins thing or something like that so that's one of the breakthroughs. And then they have another one that is coming out last year where they're using fish fish um, regenerative properties to heal blindness. Hmm. So I, I think it's interesting that they're coming back to like getting things out of the ocean and like aquatic old world, characters. Yeah. Like old world medicine. Like, you know, I mean, are we going to have, you know, them start mixing our DNA with animals <laughs> you know are we going to go into the batman beyond type of thing well, I mean, they, it, it's like you know put us i mean with... hell yeah fucking uh, <laughs> crisper man i'm hoping <laughs> let's, let's fucking start 
They're jacking actually, our genes with some wolf shit, you know, whatever. They actually found out the CRISPR thing is having uh, is causing genetic problems. I was reading an article about that. But I think it's I think it's neat that the fact that you know basically old world stuff. I mean, I'm thinking yeah. they would use this back in the day. Like, like do you know how they sanitized a the table before uh, a lot of these soaps or Lysol or bleach? You know what they did? Salt. Yeah. They would literally just salt a table. And another um, option that came from kind of the European area is they used a lot of vinegar. And it's to clean. I mean, it's 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 kind of neat that some of the stuff is 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 coming back, and I, I I do think it's a good thing. Maybe, well, you know, if look if there's viability to to any of those things, you know, in modern medicine, then there's viable things in modern medicine. Yeah. I think you know, the, it's it's just trying to separate the you know like the wives' tales from the <laughs> from the actual like oh this this was based on this, and I this might not work today, but I see what they were trying to do and we can extrapolate from that or well it goes back to what you were kind of doing with the whole thing of, of the oils when everybody and their mom were selling oils to heal everything i mean they have like uh, what was it there was the white bark oil that they you know i mean it's the same thing as they do with aspirin that's where they get it from yeah you know and but you're sitting there saying that you need to smell this to to relieve pain and shit like that it's like well just go buy some aspirin. I don't know. Right. Just, yeah. We'll see, we're just going to take that bottle and we're going to extract oil. it. Yeah. And we're going to put it in this, this pill, freeze dried, and then you can just take that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's amazing. I'm glad to see maybe they're getting back to natural medicine a little bit. That actually works. None of this, you know, Steve Jobs crap. Yeah. That, that maybe you what can... What, Steve Jobs crap? Well, Steve Jobs got a very slow, curable cancer, decided to do the natural route, mm -hmm. and end up uh, pretty much killing him. Because yeah. he refused oh, yeah. well, to, you know, there's that. Um, <laughs> there's that. To, to do to do anything. So I think it's neat the fact that hey, maybe we can stop relying on bleach and some of these heavy these heavy stuff that and do stuff that works, but not as you know that doesn't like change uh, bacteria. Like they're finding viruses, for example, that are starting to be incurable by modern medication. That's like super bugs. There's like well, we're going to get to the point where where things are going to be antibiotic resistant, and then we're <clears throat> fucked. Yep. That's why I like I want to I, I love the fact that some of this stuff that they used back in the 1600s. Hey, people say, hey, these this may be old, but this shit works. I I don't know. I think that's pretty badass. Yeah, I'd be down if well, they were like, oh, your kid's not to sleeping. Here's a bottle cures. of whiskey. Yeah, let's hope we don't have to go back to the cures they used during the Black Plague, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. But, I mean, some of this stuff, like, actually has real... Right, world... James, drink this. We're going to cut your leg off. Yep. Well, some of this stuff has... Better be some good shit. You know, some of this stuff has <laughs> real-world applications, and the problem is the the hubris of modern man is we think anybody that came before us didn't know what they were doing. And it's just it's well, not the true. The funny thing is, is that there's bottles out there uh, of, as you're saying, old-world medicine, but when the snake oil salesmen were everywhere, <clears throat> and there's some right. bottles that you look at it, and, I mean, it's, it's mixed with cocaine. It's got... It's camphor. Yeah, uh, camphor. It's got marijuana. I mean, it's basically just fucking morphine. No wonder, it, no wonder it cured everything. Yeah. I mean, it, basically, it, yeah. If it didn't, you died. I mean, that's one of the other reasons I think it's cool. Like, you know, or weed is legal because, you know, the, the CBD oils and all the stuff that might actually help people. I think that's, I yeah, think that's cool. Yeah, might, though, is the is the operative word there. There's still a lot of science that needs to come back on that. With the legalization in a lot of states, there's actually a lot of studies that are going to have to go on. But they're going to need to be long-term studies. Honestly, you know, it's been illegal to test these things in, yeah. in colleges for a long time. There's only been a couple that have ever been allowed to do it. And they're always short studies, and they're you know they're they're pretty decently funded, but they're not really that comprehensive, you know. So now the next ten, fifteen years, they're going to come out with like, hey, this actually works medicinally. And look, I'm a stoner, okay. I'm not, but I'm not going to sit here with rose colored glasses over over what I'm doing. But has it there may cured be all your a cancer? medical? It definitely has not cured all my cancer and gotten rid of your um, glaucoma. No, no, nope, glaucoma still pain? there. He's still nearsighted as shit. Um, I definitely I, feel no pain, and I have no dreams. Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, no, I completely agree. I mean, even even if if it's one of these things, it's a what do they call it? But the placebo effect. I'm totally down for anything that helps anybody to some degree, and I'm, I'm finally glad but they're see, actually then, testing. Then you me. run into kind of kind of moral problems with placebo effect. Are you know should your doctor? 
Well, see, I'm not talking. You about, know, is that in his ethical uh, uh, standards to prescribe a placebo well, effect, or should you I mean, be? I'm not necessarily talking about the doctor, though. I'm I'm saying, you know, say they say. Uh, like CBD oil. Oh, they're curing exa- anxiety. I'm totally cool with somebody going out to try. No, no, no. It. That's that's um, is, that's that's irresponsible. What if somebody choosing to do that? That's irresponsible. No, no, no. Somebody choosing it to do that for for misinformation. I'll give you that. I, you know, I see. I, the, the only thing I'm thinking is it, it won't hurt them. But hey, it also you have to talk. Yeah, but to then it, it's not. That's not the. That's not the point. Is 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 informed decision is, is is fucking everything if you're saying that this thing does a uh, a b and c it better fucking do a b and c no i don't i don't disagree but if somebody decides to try it because they heard it i'm totally for it as long as it but doesn't that's, my, that's my point is then we then we get into snake oil you know what i mean and and we're back to just hey you know you just chew on this fucking bark it'll it'll cure your cancer and don't well, see we, that german it's uh poison doctor. oak well, I mean, uh, yeah, but pretty much most things these days, especially if it's anything natural, like I've known a lot of these people, like the the, the people, like oh, all natural shit, all of it's yeah, everything is natural. Shit. But I think I think especially Ryan you, hit on the point, and I'm gonna bring it back to because I didn't even think about it when I said it, but the snake oil salesman type thing. I mean, you do have lots of people doing that. They're like, oh, you have this or that. Well, go try pot, and that's. They're persons. That's not a doctor saying it. And the person goes in the doctor's office. Hey, can we go try weed? Bam! You got a cannabis card. You don't really have to really prove that you're having these issues. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then when it comes from doctors, it's just flat out disingenuous. You know what I mean? Yeah. They they know what they're doing. They know that it that it could be good. It could not be good. It's it, what we do know is it's not it's not harmful. Okay, there's there's been enough studies from chronic users to know that there's there's not really long term effects. Yeah, um, I actually disagree uh, with that. I've known a couple of people that actually started throwing up blood anytime they smoked. Mm-hmm. Like they smoked so much, their body actually started rejecting it. A really good friend of ours became highly allergic. Yeah, to that might have been symptom of a larger issue there. Uh, well, I would say he did have larger issues going on as well, but but no, they've, they've, there's uh, there's if I can find it, I'll send it to you. There was an article a while ago stating that they're finding heavy users of marijuana are actually having physical issues, like throwing up blood, you know, hmm. the, stuff like that. If I can find it again, th- there was an actual. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, where I, I, I suppose save the 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 maybe severe allergy or, or something like that, that that might be. I don't know. I don't well, know that the. Um, Looking at that, but but I'm just saying, you know, like as far as like it's 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 not going to kill you. It's definitely not as harmful as as you know cigarettes or or, or alcohol. I mean, it's or a, just it's taking a mild opium pills and other shit that you get from the doctor. Yeah, I mean, you know, just Oxycodone. just about anything else. I mean, it's not not anything to to be overly concerned about. You know, it might rob you of a little bit of your ambition. Okay, um, here, hold on, just one second. I found it. <coughs> God damn it, Business that, Insider. Ad, ad blocker. You want to block? Ah, uh, fuck. Hold on. So, give me a... So, see if I can find it. I don't like vice, but... So, cannabinoid hypermia syndrome is a real thing that can happen if you've smoked too much pot. Uh, so, it's... Or uh, CHS is a condition associated with chronic cannabis abuse. Its three prim- primary symptoms are nausea, abdominal pain, cyclical vomiting, and element where you retch or throw up for more often than you should often to 6 to 12 times an hour. Damn. So, um, That's a lot of vomiting. Unfortunately, cannabinoids don't, uh, don't react well to CHS sufferers, or suffers, sufferers and become... There's little understanding of why this condition is often misdiagnosed. So there is problems with people who smoke a lot of weed, and I think it's probably due to how strong it is nowadays. I would think that it well, has to do with I smoke two joints in the morning. Yeah, well, I was gonna say. I mean, yeah, we were we're definitely talking. I mean, especially in the days nowadays with the uh, with the concentrates and everything. Um, like I switched over to, to to like wax and 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 things like that just for economic purposes. Uh, I mean, it basically cut my weed budget in like a third. Um, the fact he has to budget for weed makes me laugh. Well, the fact that I even call it a budget, I just fucking go buy weed when I when I run out. Um, but also, I mean, it's it's. It's gotten down to a point where I'm just like, okay, maybe maybe a little bit every other evening, weekends, you know, I'm sitting there just fucking playing video games or something like that, but I uh, definitely don't smoke like I used to. But yeah, I mean, if I continued just smoking like I used to, let's say I didn't have like this kind of a job or if I was just an artist or a fucking musician and I could just be high all day 
and I just kept smoking. I can definitely see that becoming a uh, uh, a fucking big, big issue sometimes. See, I, but, I mean, that sort of habitual use with anything is, is terrible, you know? Well, for a, for a long time, I knew a lot of stoners who would give you the same bullshit line. Oh, it can cure cancer because of it's the cannabinoids and this, and it's not this, and, and it's good for you. I, I, I know so many people who are stoners who said so much miscellaneous yeah. bullshit. Like, hey, I'm totally for you trying. If, if you have depression and you think it's going to help you, it won't, but if you think but, it will, hey, go ahead and try it. I, I really don't care. I think things are worth trying, but I, 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 I do, but I don't disagree with you. I think on some things you should definitely consult a doctor if you're going to try that. You know, like if you want to try CBD me, oil. Look, I just, I can't. Well, don't you think it's at least. I can't. Um, well, don't you think, for example. Any, don't you think, for example. I'm sorry, if, go ahead. Don't you think, for example, if you, 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 see, you read some article and say, okay, CBD oil may help something. So if you go to your doctor and say, hey, doc, I heard about this thing. Do you think it'll work? Now, the, the doctor could say, well, it may interact with this. I don't think it works, but it won't harm you. I, you know, I'm cool with that. You know, sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, that's all fine and good. And, and, and I'm fine with that. I mean, if, you, if your doctor is, is sitting there like, like, hey, fuck it, worth a shot, then, then whatever. I mean, you know, I, I suppose hopefully he's a good enough doctor not to do it sort of in place of other treatments or, or things like that. But I can't, I can't defend weed as, as medicinal. Any effect that, that, that's, that you, that you have from smoking weed or ingesting it anyhow you want in the beginning, you know, first, let's say a couple of years does not stay the same. You know, James can attest to this as much as I can. I mean, the high that you get when you're, when you're fucking 14, you know, is not the same one when you've been smoking for a long ass time. Yeah. You know, four or five years down the road, you're just like, whatever, I'm just going to smoke a bunch of weed and they go to work, you know? Yeah. No, 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 totally. You're not going to sit there and giggle. It's, you're not going to have the same kind of appetite. Um, you know, so the things like, uh, um, oh, increased appetite or, or better sleep, those effects are, are, are moot by two years in. Yeah. But I think that the, the the one question, and I don't know if science has explained it, because I've I've known people who go either way, is you know kind of chasing the dragon's tail. I've known stoners who just enjoyed it and didn't care. I've also known stoners that are always trying to chase that that high, aka you know chasing the dragon's tail. So I, it's I just know. chasing the dragon. So I know, but I'm I'm <laughs> I'm kind of you know I'm going you have to you have to be unique. I get it. No, because but, but most, my most people don't get the I will, fact that... I will never defend uh, it as, as, as medicinal, but I will defend it as recreational all fucking day. Yeah, well, most people that, I mean. don't understand that reference, so if you actually say, you know, because that's actually about the dragon chasing itself. It's an actual, it's an opium reference. It's a reason why I do that, because otherwise people have no idea what you're talking about. Well, they're dumb. Right, yeah. It's an old-time reference. They're still dumb, right? But the, the basically meaning that that you you're it's always that first high that was the best, and every other high is just trying to get back to that one. Yep, exactly. No, and I I I I agree with you uh, mostly. I mean, I'm pretty much for some people experimenting. I just think depending on what you're trying, like if you have depression, I'm I think you should actually talk to your doctor. I think trying CBD oil and some of the other medication, from my personal experience, it's a crapshoot because pretty much trying to cure depression you have to try shit to see if it works with your biology True. there's no one quick fix. you know what there's i'll no, say i'm there's there's no i'm not one of those uh i'm not one of those people that, that thinks like like all doctors are all right at all times you know what i mean there's 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 varying disciplines varying levels of each of those um a lot yeah, of research is continuing to go on you know and, and, I, and it's and it's not incumbent upon all doctors to read all literature about all things, you know, oh, and, yeah. and I understand how pharmacies work as far as, Hey, we're going to, we're going to take you out to dinner and we're going to kind of pimp our literature towards you. And then, Hey, look at all these things and here, read these things. And, you and, like you know, homes? whining and dining, somebody does work in, and, and, and I, and I get all of that. Um, so, but I, I still, way more <coughs> respect the, the just establishment, fucking medical science well, me, than the the other sort of natural home remedies so let me things like, let me let like me, they, they might even be bought so let me put it this way i've had i have depression i've had depression my entire life it's always been a battle one way or another if there is a way that cbd or smoking weed would help me i would totally try it i know from my personal experience it's not a good idea at all well 
and, Here's and the so fucking it's... real bummer, man. Is that there's there's not a lot of studies about what these 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 antidepressants, and there's a thousand of them. I'm sure you can attest to yeah. um, what what they do sort of long term. I mean, you know, the all the studies have been have been relatively short term. Hey, this this has had a marked improvement upon this the these this subset of uh, people, you know, through this six month study. And then there's not a lot of follow up. Hey, how's that uh, that that one treat you uh, two years down the road? So, so they're constantly being readjusted and constantly <laughs> switched around. So you I, know, uh, I know it's like, so much guesswork, man. It's fucking frustrating. Like I don't I don't take any meds now. I'd rather just deal with it the way I've been dealing with it. I I'm not bad enough that you know my life's in danger. For example, I just I've learned how to moderate my behavior. For some people, it works. For some others, it doesn't. I have well, taken... I'll tell you what. My my mom uh, was depressed pretty much my whole life. You know what I mean? Like like manic depressive, fucking borderline bipolar. I mean, you know, just would be losing it one minute, find the next kind of kind of kind of stuff. Obviously, I don't have to explain this to you guys, but uh, about maybe about a year, two years ago, she just fucking straight up got off her meds. You know what I mean? Like the doctor weaned her off pretty much uh, from six months you know, to, to, from half to six months and then, then gone the next. And, um, the, the problem that, that she started describing to me for, for a long time, cause I was always that kid that was like, like, Oh, I just want to make my mom feel better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and she kept describing these things like, like she's got no highs or lows anymore. Like, like, okay, I don't get super depressed anymore, but I also don't get super happy. She's like, I haven't fucking cried in like three years. Oh no, I I, you know I, I mean? totally like know what that's anything. like. You're you're monitoring, you know, and I'm like, man, that's that's rough, you know what I mean? And I remember what she used to be like, you know what I mean? And and Sweet. you know, when I was a kid and everything, you know, all hunky dory and whatnot. We were the cleavers, um, and yeah, I mean, she was able to to have emotions beyond you know just sort of this flat line. I I so we got to end up because we're, we're running a little long, but I, I was on some medication. I, there's two experiences I've had. One of the reasons I chose personally to moderate and watch my behavior, but I'm not a super bad case. So i got to warn you it may not work. What I do it may not work for everybody, but if I, you I take had, medical advice from us, you're an idiot. You deserve to die. Minus the die Drink part. Bleach. Um, so I, 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 a doctor gave me a medication at one point that literally made me the angriest I've ever been. I literally, I was driving to work one day and I was commuting to work because I work was an hour and a half away or something like that. And I literally almost stopped a guy in traffic, dragged him out of his car. I had veins <laughs> popping out of my head. I was so pissed off. And I'm not naturally that angry of a person. <laughs> and, and so I stopped it because it was like, this is pissing me off. I mean, I, I was incredibly an angry person. And the other one was like Ryan's mom is I had no emotions. I mean, I was like the Terminator. Nothing made me happy. Nothing made me sad. I just existed. It was it's watch the movie Equilibrium a lot like that. Yeah, where, really. Where you have no your flat line, nothing like close friends could die. I'm like, oh, that's really sad. And that's as far as it ever fucking got. It was just the acknowledgement of an emotion, which all of a sudden you're like fucking Spock from Star Trek. <laughs> and, right. And, and so what, what I do is, okay, you're acknowledging that you're sad. Sometimes it's just you have to go through it. There, there's no way out of it most of the time. It, it, it's finding things that make you happy. If, if you're at work, just fucking work because you're not going to be paying attention to it. If you're home, there's always little things that make you happy. So it's, if it's playing video games, play for half hour. Uh, if it's, as long as it's not damaging, like no alcohol, no weed, no shit like that. Just find small things you enjoy. You do that, your life will get better. But if you mm. want to make it chemically better, I can tell you from personal experience and from friends of mine and family, alcohol and drugs will just make you fucking more miserable. It's, you will be chasing the tail because that, that just, it doesn't do anything for you. So it, it really is about finding shit that makes you happy. And if there's nothing that makes you happy, look for it. Yeah. I guarantee you'll find something. Yeah. Just make sure you don't have to pay to do it. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> so uh, any last comments? Not in the moment. Nope. Good one to end on. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Preston, and Ryan, well, you know Steven. what I mean. 
Apparently, you just married Ryan. Congratulations. In this state, it's legal. So, <laughs> so for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye.